Hello and welcome to Rapid.io 101. My name is Barry Wood. I'm an expert applications engineer working at IDT. I have contributed to the Rapid.io spec for the last 10 years and I've also been the architect of some of IDT's Rapid.io parts. Today I wanted to talk with you a little bit about Rapid.io. Now most of you have probably not heard an awful lot about Rapid.io even though you likely use it every day indirectly. Rapido is used in a great many of cell phone base stations. So if you use an LTE base station, that base station uses Rapido technology. It's also likely that if you're using a 3G base station, you're using Rapido technology. Rapido is also used largely in military compute, so high performance mobile compute as well as industrial control and medical imaging. You find that Rapid.io excels wherever there are size, weight, and power constraints. And the latest example of that is that Rapid.io was selected by NASA and a number of other companies as the next generation space interconnect. If Rapid.io can meet the size, weight, and power constraints of space, I'm sure it's ideal for your application. The Rapid.io specification is a layered specification consisting of a logical transport and physical layer. The logical layer defines read-write and messaging semantics for use by Rapid.io components. The transport layer defines how Rapid.io packets are routed through a Rapid.io fabric. And the physical layer defines the electrical encoding and electrical characteristics of Rapid.io links. There are also a number of Rapido specification parts that cut across the different layers. I'm going to talk about two of those today. The first is the Rapido system bring up specification, which defines how a Rapido system is initialized, and the part eight error management specification, which defines the fault tolerance support for Rapido systems. The Rapido specification is available in its entirety from www.rapidio.org, there is no charge. This chart shows a little bit about how the Rapidio specification is mapped to actual devices. Now, the Rapidio ecosystem consists of two kinds of devices, endpoints and switches. Endpoints are devices that originate and process packets. Switches route packets to endpoints. So at the top, you can understand that the logical layer specification largely applies to endpoints. In this chart, there is an example of a microprocessor sending a request to a DSP and receiving a response. The transport layer maps largely to Rapido switch devices. At the, the physical layer specification applies to every Rapido link. At either end of the link are two link partners or processing elements. These link partners exchange two kinds of information. The first is packets and the second are control symbols. The use of control symbols allows Rapid.io to guarantee the in-order delivery of packets from an endpoint to their ultimate destination. Rapid.io control symbols have a unique capability among interconnects in that they can be embedded within packets. This gives Rapid.io the lowest latency control path for flow control and error recovery of any interconnect. The transfer of packets is governed by two quantities. The first is the priority of the packet, and the second is the acknowledge ID found in the packet and also carried in control symbols. Control symbols carry two kinds of information. The first is information that the transmit side sends to the receiver directly. These are things like start of packet, end of packet, or a multicast event control symbol that signals an event has occurred within the Rapido network. The other kind of information is information that the receiver is sending back to the transmitter. These are things like packet accepted, so a packet was successfully transferred, packet not accepted, so an error was detected, uh, link response, or timestamp. These message sequence charts give 
some information about how Rapid.io control symbols are used to ensure the reliable in-order delivery of packets in a Rapid.io fabric. The chart at the left shows success case Rapid.io packet transfer. You'll note that the packet is delimited with a start of packet and terminated with an end of packet control symbol. That packet is then acknowledged. So with every hop through a Rapid.io fabric, each link partner ensures that the, its link partner receives the Rapid.io packet successfully before reusing the buffer for that Rapid.io packet. You'll also see that packets can be terminated with a start of packet control symbol. So if you're sending many packets back to back, you can save some bandwidth by not sending an end of packet, but instead sending start of packet, packet, start of packet, and so forth. The middle message sequence chart shows how Rapid.io flow control works. Most Rapid.io devices will send packets to the receiver regardless of how many free buffers the receiver has. If the receiver does not have sufficient buffering to accept the packet, the receiver sends back a retry control symbol indicating the acknowledgement ID of the packet that is being retried. The transmitter then sends a restart from retry control symbol acknowledging receipt of the retry and chooses a higher priority packet to send. The exchange of control symbols usually takes less than 200 nanoseconds on a Rapid.io link. A similar mechanism is used for error recovery but instead of a retry control symbol, the receiver sends a packet not accepted control symbol indicating that a transmission error has been detected. The transmitter sends a link request control symbol requesting the acknowledgement ID of the next packet to be, that should be sent. The link response contains that acknowledgement ID. Once that link response has been received successfully, packet transmission resumes. Again, the error recovery can occur in 300 nanoseconds or less on Rapid.io links. This is far faster than the error recovery that Ethernet, with its end-to-end -end packet timeouts, allows. This chart contains a little bit more information about priority and acknowledgement IDs. You can peruse that and read it at your leisure. This chart has a little bit more information about the packet format of Rapid.io. You see that just as it is a layered specification, so the packet header is also layered with a physical transport and logical layer header. Rapid.io packets longer than 80 bytes have an intermediate CRC in them, which allows a receiving endpoint to ensure the integrity of the transport and logical layer headers before they begin to process the packet. This is just one way that Rapid.io was designed to minimize latency and maximize the efficiency of packet transfers between endpoints. The physical layer header is two bytes that actually contain a physical transport and logical layer header within them. The packet priority as well as the acknowledgement ID are encoded in the physical layer header. The transport type bits or TT bits determine the size of the following transport layer header and the F type determines the packet format uh, for the logical layer header which occurs in the packet. Rapid.io devices are identified using a 8, 16, or 32-bit device ID. Any Rapid.io packet contains two device IDs. The first is the destination ID, which is where the packet is being sent to. The second is the source ID, which is where the packet originated from. To route a packet, the destination ID is used to index into a routing table, which determines the output port that the switch should send the packet to. Once a packet is received by an endpoint, if the endpoint must create a response for that packet, 
it simply switches the destination and source ID and sends back the response. I should note that Rapid.io also supports multicast, in which case when the switch uses a destination ID to look up the output port, instead of a single port being returned, a bit vector of ports is returned. Every bit in that vector will receive a copy of the packet. I mentioned earlier that Rapid.io supports read-write as well as messaging semantics. This chart contains some information about the read-write semantics or how the read-write semantics of Rapid.io are implemented. Rapid.io supports a variety of read, write, atomic, and cache coherency operations that support RDMA as well as CC NUMA. Rapido messaging has several different possible implementations. The first, confusingly, is named a messaging packet. This chart gives some information about the format of messaging packets. Rapido doorbells are a much shorter message that indicate that an event has occurred in the system. Just like message packets, doorbell packets are designed to minimize the amount of silicon required to successfully receive and process them. For this reason, if there are insufficient resources to accept a doorbell packet at the receiver, the doorbell packet or message packet will cause a logical layer retry to occur. This is different from a physical layer retry and it allows limited resources of embedded memory to be used exclusively to process Rapid.io packets. So Rapid.io does not need a lot of SDRAM bandwidth to efficiently and effectively deliver a lot of throughput and guaranteed latency. Data streaming packets are another mechanism that is used to support messaging semantics. So while messaging packets only support a four kilobyte transfer, data streaming packets support up to 64 kilobytes per transaction. Data streaming packets also support many, many more queues than messaging packets. So they are ideal for virtualization. Data streaming packets also support extended header flow control. Extended header flow control was designed to manage quality of service in systems that use client server kinds of architectures, as well as publish subscribe. Extended header flow control allows a client to communicate the degree that its queues are full to a server, and the server can then respond with either a simple X on X off rate adjustment or credit based flow control. This allows the server to very tightly control the quality of service and hence the user experience that the system is delivering. This chart gives some information about the Rapid IO system discovery algorithm. It's a very simple recursive algorithm where, for example, the microprocessor first determines that it's connected to a switch. Using standard registers, it checks each switch port to determine what that switch port is connected to. Device IDs are allocated to the devices that are connected, and the switch routing tables are updated. Note that at this point, the memory map of the system does not need to be determined. That is because Rapid.io routes packets based on device ID and not on address. This allows Rapid.io to support any system topology. Rapid.io also has support for fault tolerance. If a Rapid.io endpoint fails, or if the link to that endpoint fails, a Rapid.io switch can be configured to detect that failure within nanoseconds. It can also be configured to discard the packets that are destined for that failed endpoint. This prevents a cascade congestion failure from occurring in a Rapid.io system and allows the system host or the secondary host to diagnose and recover from the fault while the rest of the system continues to operate correctly. If you would like more information about Rapid.io, 
please consult any of these companies or, of course, my own IDT. Thank you very much for your attention, and let's go Rapid.io.